Borneo is about 1% of the, the Earth's land surface and it has about 5% of the species um, within that area. Most of those species are concentrated in this heart of Borneo rainforest part, so it's enormously biodiverse. It's partly important because of its size. So the larger a block of forest is, or the larger a habitat is, the more species and the more value it has inside it. And so, um, as I say, this is one of the largest that's left um, in Southeast Asia, or even in the world. My name's Tom Maddox, uh, and I'm the leader of the Heart of Borneo initiative for WWF. I'm basically the bridge between the different activities that, that, that are happening. So one of the strengths, but one, also one of the problems of the Heart of Borneo is that it covers three different countries. Even within WWF, we have a lot of individual projects, saving orangutans here, saving rhinos here, working with communities in National Park here. And my role is basically linking together what WWF is doing around the heart of Borneo and bringing it together into one bigger picture that feeds into what the three governments say they want to achieve in this area. So the heart of Borneo initiative is, is actually, it's a government initiative. Um, so back in 2007, the three Borneo governments got together um, and they recognised this chunk of rainforest that covers all three of our countries, this, this area is special and we're going to work together and cooperate and um, uh, conserve this area for the benefit of the species that live there and the people that live there. Borneo, because access was a little bit trickier there, it's, it's one of the, the areas which is um, it's not as badly deforested as, say, Sumatra, but exactly the same patterns are happening. If you look at other parts of, let's take Indonesia as a good example, you can see very sort of similar large blocks of forest that over time have just disappeared, basically. Initially, it's, it's logging, and then it's logging too much. It's unsustainable logging until land gets too degraded. Then it generally gets converted to plantation agriculture. So that could be pulp and paper, could be oil palm. So this pattern has happened time and time again in various countries around Southeast Asia, around the world in, in fact. It's not just important for species that live there as well, it's also important for the uh, what we call the ecosystem services that it provides. So it produces water and um, flood defences and um, water sort of filtration for about 11 million people that live on the island of Borneo. We really don't want to always need to have NGOs saying save this forest, save this species. We really want politicians and communities to be deciding to save these areas for their own reasons, for their own economic logical reasons. So that involves changing the sort of underlying uh, policy frameworks, the underlying economic arguments and, and bringing value to, to nature so that people will actually recognise they need to conserve it for reasons beyond because WF told them to. This last chunk, the heart of Borneo, is this, is this last chunk that's left. If we don't recognise its value and if we don't do something about it, then it's not going to be there for much longer.